What's up everyone, it's an Ice Style here and today I'm going to be attempting to do a splatter paint acid etch stone wash on this uh, CGRB Centros. So what inspired me to do this idea is on the Neves Knives channel, I saw that they had a Kaiser Sheepdog that looked kind of like this. I'm not sure the process that they did, but it still looked cool and so I'm going to try it on this. And if you don't know what splatter paint is, it's a thing with art, my brother has done it before. For example, this Xbox controller that was old, he did a splatter paint on it, but this was like a black, red, and gray splatter paint. And so I want to see if I can use the nail polish to splatter paint, splatter paint onto this blade. And basically, the etching solution will not be able to eat through that nail polish, so it should leave some dots on here. And then I will stonewash it, and I think that it might look cool in the end. So I'm going to try it out, walk you guys through my process, and let's get to it. Right now I'm cleaning off this blade, and this is in a very important step, because if there are any uh, dirty spots or defects, it will show up in the end. I'm putting nail polish on basically anywhere where metal touches metal, so the stop pin, the tang the where the two bearings go and the detent track and there are some more depending on the locking mechanism of your knife so right now i am just doing the other side i would suggest splitting it up between do two different sides and that's because um it just gets hard trying to balance it having both sides dry having both sides clean and not get dirty and i think that that really helps out so what i did is i do one side and then take a little break and then do the other side Keep in mind that for this splatter paint process, you will need an old toothbrush and it will definitely be ruined after putting nail polish on it unless you want to brush with nail polish if that's your thing. So the overall entire process of this was very frustrating. The nail polish would dry very quickly on the toothbrush and so I would almost immediately have to put it on the toothbrush and then flick it onto the knife and as you just saw right there, I ended up just wiping all it all of it off and starting over because i was mad now eventually i learned that sticking a q-tip inside of the fingernail polish container and then rubbing that on the toothbrush actually got a lot more nail polish on it which made a lot more nail polish go on the knife when you flicked it but overall it was very frustrating and i'm very glad that i'm done with this process now in the future when i'm doing this voiceover so this was overall very annoying to do, and if I was doing like 20 of these, if I offered mod services, I would pretty much go mentally insane from how frustrating this is. But it's overall not bad. What you're seeing right now is me doing this on the other side, and it actually looks better on the show side than on the clip side that I'm doing right now. And I'm just going to skip through this because it's kind of boring and I don't think you guys would want to see the same fast forwarded clips again. But overall it went about the same. It just still was a very annoying and irritating process. And I actually switched out my gloves because they were filled with that fuzz from the cottony swabs that I was using to clean the blade off with and the q-tips and then the nail polish. And it just did not mix well and was very messy and gross. So now that we're all done with that, it is time to brush with our lovely toothbrush. So now it's time for one of the more fun parts, but also one of the more stressful parts where I put it in the etching solution. And the stressful part about it is you always have a second thought like, oh, what if the blade was dirty or something? But I actually have this tied to a pencil to keep the string from falling in to where I'd have to reach all the way into that acid to pull it out. Just to clarify, if you're wondering which solution is which, just looking at these two, the one on the right is the actual etching solution, which is the ferric chloride acid mixed with water, and the one on the left is just water to rinse the blade off after I'm done, and I'm also drying the knife off here, taking off the string, and wiping off the nail polish that's the splatter paint with some acetone. So just looking at this blade, I think that it actually turned out pretty good. It's kind of dramatic right here of the splatter paint. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stonewash this and kind of blend the colors a little bit more. And I think it'll look great. There is my feet. And right now my workstation or setup or whatever you want to call it looks like I just had to 
perform surgery on someone with q-tips and a toothbrush so i'm gonna go get my uh, little rock mixture and i actually have a new one that i will show you guys so here is my old stone wash media this was in an uh orange juice bottle and then it was just rocks these rocks are pretty flat and not very sharp and then it was just dish soap and water and my new one is in a more like a better size container it and in it i put dish soap water and then something kind of like windex and so yeah i think that this might be a little bit better but i'm just experimenting with it and seeing how it goes so let's get stone washing for the stone washing process be sure you keep a little bit of the string outside of the container so that when you open it back up you have something to grab onto and pull the knife blade out it's not the end of the world if you don't do it it just makes life easier for yourself in the future so after a minute of um stone washing here i'm gonna see what it looks like and my container is all bubbled up to the top from that um dish soap so i'm gonna grab a paper towel wipe off the blade and just check it so yeah it looks good uh i'm gonna go a probably a couple more minutes in the stone washing so yeah i'll see you then this is what happens when you put too much water inside the container when you take it out it gets all over your hands I mean, it's all sudsy because of the dish soap, but yeah, it's kind of a mess. So I'd suggest using a little bit less water than me. I'm gonna keep stone washing. So we are finished up here and I think that it came out pretty good. You know, this process was kind of annoying because the whole splatter paint, I don't think that the fingernail polish really does a good job at sticking to this. And it was just very difficult and frustrating. So I don't wanna do this for a while, but I think that it came out pretty good. I think the show side looks a lot better than the clip side but anyway i'm going to get this nail polish cleaned up from the bearing track and the detent track and then i will put my knife back together and i might do a little bit of more mods on the knife i'm not sure i forgot to videotape this part but i'm also acid etching these liners right now i'm gonna acid etch them just like i did the blade at about three minutes but i'm not gonna stone wash them and the reason that i'm not gonna stone wash them is because it's really one of those things where you're not going to notice the scratches on it too much. And I don't want to damage the detent or maybe the internals or tolerances. I don't know. I'm just playing it safe. I'm just going to leave it etched like it is. So I got my liners. I got my blade. I got my lucky toothbrush. And I am ready to put this thing back together. Let's just take a look at all of its glory. Mm, that looks nice. All right. So I'm going to put it back together now. All right, so for the final reveal of the knife, here it is. And I think that, okay, I still don't know what to think about it because in a way, I think it kind of looks cool with this acid edge blade and then these green liners, or no, not liners, scales. But if the hardware was like black, I think that that would look really good. But I still, it almost kind of looks like, like, I don't know how to describe it other than like a Damascus plain Jane Sabenza, like the dark blade contrasting with the lighter color handle. And I think that it looks pretty good. One interesting thing about this CGRB was it had very bad lock rock. And I actually uh, bent the lock bar over and it actually worked. Now, one thing weird is that lockup looks a lot earlier than it was. So I don't know what happened, but the lock rock is fixed and overall, it seems like a very good knife. And I just gotta say one thing about these CGRB screws. These T6s are so shallow and very soft and you will definitely strip them if you are not paying very close attention. I luckily did not strip them, but it's still just like my bit, which I have this um, T6 Weehaw driver, which is a very nice and pretty much new to me. And it's still just, it's having trouble sitting in there. And overall, yeah, these screws are pretty bad. The pivot's fine, but I don't like it that much. So looking at the liners here, oh yeah, that looks good. I'm actually really happy with this mod. So I'm going to sharpen up real quick and then we will move on with our day.
So I actually got a new sharpening stone. It's the Spider Coat Medium Bench Stone. I'm still using it and I'm really excited for it. And I'm gonna see if with all these chips in this blade, if it can reprofile it. So once again, another experiment to my modification of this knife. All right, so I got this knife sharpened up and the Spyderco Medium so did pretty good. Now it took me probably like 10 or 15 minutes and that is a lot longer than it usually takes me to reprofile D2 steel because I have these coarser stones that do a great job at it. And it did fine overall, but I probably would use a coarser stone and then move to this later. But I'm really happy with my new stone. I'm really liking it. So here's a cut test on this receipt paper. I will get out a piece of phone book paper. That wasn't that good. Let's just see what it's at. Then if we just drop it a couple times, it should actually improve that edge a lot. That was like five times each side and dropping does a lot for a knife. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope the knife looks good. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.